19 minutes after 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Tuesday morning. I was watching this thing on YouTube, Robin. It was like a, I guess it was a synopsis of a couple of different films that documented uh, famous people who kind of did themselves in by alcohol. One, one of them was Judy Garland, and uh, I guess I never knew that about Judy Garland. And it, it, this is such a shame that, uh, if, for those who remember Judy Garland. Yeah, I remember that. I'm really too young to even remember her, really. But but you remember her because you saw her films, even though she probably, I don't even know when she died. But, but She the, was so dynamic. But the point is, you know, when, when people, um, I mean, she seemed like she was a really nice and obviously a very talented lady. Um, so I, I don't know. I kind of went on on a tangent right there. Robert Whitlow is on the phone. <laughs> yeah, he's not going to talk about Judy Garland. He has written a book, however, that does deal with alcoholism. It's a, a book called A House Divided. Robert is a practicing attorney. He's the recipient of the Christie Award for Excellence, the recipient of awards for more than a dozen legal dramas. Three of his novels have been made into feature films. Uh, one is the the list, another is the trial, and the third one is Jimmy. His new book is called A House Divided, a legal thriller novel. And uh, I don't know why I thought of the Judy Garland thing when I was introducing him. I just did, and I didn't connect the dots well for you at all, did I? Mm-hmm. Robert Whitlow, good morning, Robert. How are you? I think you're doing a great job. What are you talking about? Oh, good, <laughs> good boy. Your, your phone is really a little breaking up a lot. Are you? Uh, are you underwater? <laughs> <laughs> Robert, are you there? I'm in North Carolina. Can you hear me okay? Uh, yeah. Have you ever seen P.B. Herman when he talks to his fish? <laughs> <laughs> uh, where, where are you? Where are you calling from? I'm uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina. Oh, Charlotte, North Carolina? Yes. Right. Oh, okay. Does that work a little better? No, it sounds like you're gargling. Is is there a, a publicist? Because the publicist sounded perfect on the phone. Yeah, the conferencing. Laura Con- sounded great. Con- conferencing, sorry. Okay. Well, I apologize for the technical problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's fun, kind of funny, <laughs> this actually. going to be it. <laughs> All right, this is going to be hard. Uh, tell me about A House Divided. Um, what is it? Give us a thumbnail sketch of the story. All right. It's a, it's a book, as you alluded to. It's about alcoholism. And the main character is a lawyer in his 60s that has a, an alcohol uh, problem that has you know, pretty much devastated his life. Hmm. And uh, he takes on a case that he probably shouldn't take, given his condition. It's kind of a, a toxic tort, kind of Aaron Brockovich kind of scenario. Okay, let, let me make sure I'm understanding you. Uh, so the, the, the attorney is, is the alcoholic? That's right. That's right. And you know, which sadly is, you know, you know, art imitates life. And you know, the statistics I've seen are that you know, about, uh, the incidence of alcoholism in lawyers is about two to three times the general population. So it's oh wow, you know, sadly not an uncommon scenario. And so he is um, um, he's wrestling with with his own personal demons, and then they're also. A couple of uh, other characters, his children, they're adults, and so we have the dynamic of adult children of an alcoholic, and you know some of the unique challenges and, and problems that those kind of folks uh, have as well. So mm-hmm, that's, mm-hmm. that's kind of the setup. And, and, and did you have to do research for this? And, and, and forgive me for asking it this way, but uh, do you have personal experience with this? No, no, I don't mind you asking at all. Uh, no, I, I really don't personally, but. In my law practice, I have um, represented hundreds of people with alcohol and addiction problems. So, you know, familiar with you know what the struggles that some of these folks have, and right. you know, also have some familiarity with with Alcoholics Anonymous and you know the program and the help that they offer. But I have to tell you, man, working on this story, I, I got deeper into that and learning more and right. listening to more, and I came away so impressed. With AA. With AA, okay. Uh, and and yeah. s- d- does your character uh, go for help in any way, at, like AA? Yeah, that, that's, that's in the story. And, I mean, when I, when I finally got to the part of the book where he finally admitted the first step of AA, which is admit that he has a problem and, you know, doesn't right. control. Right, right. I was so relieved. I said, man, this guy's finally going to get some help. <laughs> There's hope for it. You know? Oh, really? It, it's, it's interesting. So you create the character, but you actually are, are having empathy for him. Oh yeah, man! You have to you have to get in there with your character and live with them, and you know because 
if if the writer does that, then you know there's a chance that the um, emotional you know dynamic of what's happening in the character's life can be communicated to the reader. And, right, right. And that's what's after. You know, you know the, the the thing I was watching with. Um Judy Garland. Judy Garland, thank you. Uh, she, um, I, I guess, she, I, you know, I didn't get the feeling that she ever even acknowledged that she had a problem. I, I, I don't know, but but you're right. That's probably the first step. And and and, it, and, and the other thing I think I think that sounds like it's a, it's a parallel in, in a way is that somebody who's very talented and, and can contribute so much to the world as a, as an attorney or as a as a singer in her case um, is. I don't know what the word is, is is cursed by this by this addiction by this uh, habit I don't know what what you call it but but by alcohol well and you know the thing the thing one of the things that I've, I've learned is that's really different about an alcoholic as opposed to somebody that's just a casual social drinker is a lot of alcoholics can remember their very first drink and the reason that they remember it is because when they took that drink, they felt, quote, normal, quote, for the first time. I mean, it, it was... It oh, really? It was like something that, yeah, this is not uncommon at all if, if people that will, you know, unpack their story for you. And it's not universal, but it's way very common. And wow, I so, never, never heard that before. You know, they're, mm -hmm. Yeah, they're having, so they're having to deal with right, something that... You know, they, were, they, they have a need, but obviously this is not the solution. Right. And it's, it's, it's not just the, the dad that's going through this while he's helping other people. Uh, like you mentioned, the other two characters are his children, and it shows you the human nature of people. Uh, the, uh, uh, his, his, his son was uh, revered, and he was had a great, great job offer, and then all of a sudden, because of his dad and the way events turned, uh, they just dropped him. Because of the reputation. Yeah, sounds, like sounds, like sounds like you're reading this book. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. Because, you know, unfortunately, when any of us have a problem, there's a ripple effect. And, you know, some of those, some of those ripples turn into uh, tsunamis, you know. Oh, wow. And the impact it has on those around us, yeah. Um, d did this book... Or, or maybe the better question is, did the research for this book change your work as an attorney, or, or will it maybe in the future, if you happen to have a client who is an alcoholic? Do, do you have a better understanding of how they're, they, they tick? Absolutely. I mean, there is, there is no doubt. I've always encouraged people to, to seek help, and including AA and other resources. But my level of zeal for that has gone way up. Oh, really? And, you know, when I look at the client now and say, say, man, I really encourage you to take to do this or consider this to get some help. You know, there's without a question, there's more, uh, you know, feeling behind it, and and I'm going to follow up. Now. Yeah. So, if if a, if a family is torn, torn, if a family is torn apart because one of the the heads of household is an alcoholic, then I can understand the house divided. But you have a different meaning behind the title in your book. What what is the uh, title? A house divided. Well, it, you know, it's basically part of a of a, a Bible verse. You know, a house divided won't stand is the rest of the verse. Uh huh. And so, you know, that's the basic premise. Hey, if this house is divided, if it doesn't. You know, start doing some things to shore up the foundation. This thing's going to get even worse. So, um, you know, that's the that's the origin of the of the title. Robert, you've been with us before, and I just I, for some reason it just it just realized that um, I love having you on the show. Thank you for coming back this time for your new book. Uh, next time the, with the phone connection, I have a hard time even recognizing your voice. But yeah, I'll call Laura back. But, but it does sound like you're gargling. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, I have a, I have a copy of. I have a copy of the new book, A House Divided. Call me if you want this copy. Um, Robert, real quickly, how do we get the book? Is it on all the normal book sites and bookstores? It, yep, exactly. Um, just all of the you know retail outlets and online, it's available. Okay. Uh, and uh, as I said, I have a copy here, so call me if you want the copy that was sent to us. Uh, Robert Whitlow, thank you so much for being on the air with us. Uh, enjoy yourself. Um, you're North Carolina, you said, right? 
That's right. North Carolina. Okay. Charlotte. Oh, Charlotte. Charlotte. Yeah. All right. Um, well, we'll take a little break and we'll be right back. Thank you very much. We'll be right back. Fox News Alert. I'm Joe Chiro. Stock prices surging more than 200 points at the open after yesterday's big drop. China's index plunged nearly 8% overnight and other Asian indexes were mixed. Japanese stocks had a very choppy trading day. Volumes and volatility are through the roof. The Nikkei down about 4%. And over in South Korea, the Cosby actually recovered a little bit earlier, gaining about 9 tenths 1% led by automakers. Fox Business Network's Tracy Chang. European markets also rebounding. The illegal immigrant charged with murdering a woman in San Francisco appears in court today. Juan Francisco Lopez Sanchez has already pleaded not guilty to murdering Catherine Steinle and a not guilty plea was later entered on his behalf to a subsequent charge of being a felon in possession of a firearm. He'd been deported from the U.S. five times before. Fox Radio's Jessica Rosenthal and French President Francois.